Hello Blazers, no fuckers, eh? back today with another video. No, he doesn't say that after he says his intro. And two, I should stop making jokes about no fuckers now. It's getting a bit outdated for my channel, even though my channel is just starting out. You know what I mean. So today, I have a specific topic to talk about, hence the title of this video. And I hope you guys find it enjoyable. So let's just get into it. YouTube, we all know YouTube. YouTube is a platform where everyone comes in to create whatever they want in the form of videos entertaining that concept might be or not doesn't matter people still watch it and if it's enjoyable they'll engage with likes and comments and if it's not then they probably dislike it and report it for sexual content because it talked about a favorite creator of theirs we all by now know of the relevant and non-relevant channels on it some are helpful in shaping the platform while others aren't none of that matches at the moment because we're diving into the ocean that's filled with the ones that push the ball crap away from the platform in one specific genre that people consume daily, me included, but uh, only on the weekends. I know I'm, uh, I'm, I know I'm not like the others. It's in my birth certificate. The commentary genre as a whole is basically a type of content where people express opinions and or offer explanations about a certain event or situation. However, there is a possibility for some content like Sauron's videos or others like Hand the Loser, Benson Chen, Meme Ryan and even PewDiePie's content to be considered a part of the genre because it somewhat falls in line with the definition offered by the epic Google Dictionary. Uh, does anyone use Google Dictionary anyway? The YouTube definition that we all know of is that commentary videos are content that revolves around trending topics on the internet. We're gonna go with both definitions for now since they complete each other and also since we're talking about the platform as a whole. We have plenty of creators who are defined as commentators. Out of the genre we got Paris and Nicole, Black Wolf Company, Turkey Tom, Kavos, Nerd City and many other creators who define the commentary scene as a whole. Each of them create their own content and their own style. Some rely on humor to present their logical opinions, while others rely on extensive research to express their feelings on the matter presented. All their opinions are heard by a massive following and that helped them build their online empire of teens and adults alike. There are multiple instances when their opinions managed to shape the platform to what it is today in terms of content and what's allowed and what's not. Many of these YouTubers gained the respect of the community over time and managed to stay relevant by presenting and discussing situations that matter with logical thoughts, all of which impacted the experience of the individual surfing YouTube for content he or she might like. At the beginning, let me present to you the first thing I'd like to discuss. Drama. You see, drama is the first thing that comes to mind when you mention a YouTuber from the genre. Kavos, for example, talked about many YouTubers during his growth period, which led to him securing a place among the big channels on YouTube. Drama is kind of a sub part of the commentary genre since people talk about it while presenting their thoughts or feelings about a certain celebrity or content creator on the site. Drama YouTubers bring up creators who have done nothing but mistakes and expose them for it on the whole website. At times, it might become a serious issue that could lead to the termination of the channel of the individual who's receiving backlash from the exposed videos. Ah, I'm only talking about this when it's reasonable since it can be an epic bra moment if the exposed video has been created to make an innocent gamer himself by the amount of false accusations. We all know these gamers I'm talking about. No need to give them attention. One of them uh, has uh, his views dropping from 1 million to uh, 100k anyway. Drama channels impacted not only the way people differentiate between good and bad YouTubers but also helped bring those terrible YouTubers such as Onision and Austin Jones to the attention of YouTube as a platform. Especially Onision, uh, no one with two brain cells is watching any of his videos nowadays. It served as a way to show the people that there are better creators who need the attention that is well deserved more than others and by others I mean the messed up ones. Thank you. 
YouTube's platform is changing every 5 seconds nowadays. Sometimes for the worse, while in other times for the better. The better is rest, so don't get your hopes up. This point matters because commentators were a part of the process that made YouTube what it is today. Either it is minor or major, it's still an impact. Creators from the genre were responsible for many changes that were applied to YouTube's content. I'll give you an example. Do you remember the time when there was a Peter ring on YouTube? I didn't hear of it until Paris Nicol touched upon the subject in one of his videos. That video had a huge impact on YouTube at that time and it managed to respond in less than a week after the upload if I recall correctly. In other areas of YouTube we had clickbait content for a while and it's still to this day. If we recall the days of GTA 6 clickbait and the epic how to stop the train in GTA 6 and uh, cringy uh, GTA support calls. God I, I, I hope they get to go to high court and get punished by listening to Baby Shark for 365 days straight. Many commentary channels criticize the massive clickbait and the algorithm that's pushing the content itself. Days later, one of the clickbaiters, Fernando the Cringe Man, had his channel suspended for a while. He's back again but became relevant as well. There were others but he was the most famous one at that time. This happened to Derv as well, the uh, little English minion. He got his channel terminated as well after posting those terrible 3am clickbait videos. Lord, that was a dark time for everyone. They started talking about him and throwing videos everywhere about his content and then in a matter of days, his channel was Thanos snapped out of existence. All of these actions helped shape YouTube for a while and sort of made it nicer even to those small channels to thrive. The genre itself is a part of YouTube. Channels pop up each day like a crop from Minecraft. Some are good, others are terrible, but overall the genre itself did good stuff for the whole community. And denying the impact it had on YouTube is just hitting yourselves in the knees, bro. I'm, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Commentary videos contributed to YouTube in multiple occasions. It shed light on many problems occurring within YouTube that could have been a risk. It somewhat helped a bit in making YouTube a big platform and helped bring up issues with many problematic content creators and I admire that about it. I still believe it is a wonderful type of content that will never die and will stay on YouTube for years to come. Even after we die, aliens from Area 51 will learn about YouTube and start watching Shrek has sworn. Alright, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like and comment down below what you think about this whole subject. Do you think commentary channels are a good thing for YouTube or not? And tell me what you think. What are your opinions about it? Um, I'm sorry for not uploading lately because I've been so busy with many stuff and sometimes when I try to upload I've been just busy. By saying busy the second time I meant to say lazy but I said busy. Just bear with with me all right been a long time since i made a video this video is kind of a serious video and a jokey one as well it's just a mixed bag but i hope you enjoyed it nonetheless i am at the moment currently planning to release a new video next week after this one so stay tuned for that and i'll see you guys next time have a wonderful day